What is up, everybody? It is your boy, and I'm going to be here talking about a lot of the news that we have learned uh, in yesterday's Pokemon Presents video. So I did say I would be talking about this when I made that Quick Thoughts episode a couple days back, and I gotta say, I am not disappointed at all with what we learned. So I'll just talk about the quick stuff real quick. I know I have Legends Arceus on my screen, but I just wanted to talk about Pokemon Unite first, because I already told you guys in the, in, the, in the last video, I love Pokemon Unite. I'm obsessed with it. I can't stop playing it. And we got news. We got Sylveon's gonna be in the game, which was leaked, so I already knew that was gonna happen, but cool that they announced it. And Mamoswine, which was not even leaked. There were a bunch of mons that were leaked to be in Unite, but not Mamoswine. Mamoswine was never mentioned to ever be in the game. And that has got to be a... That's just that's just a great choice. Like, Mamoswine is so sick. That's That just fits really well in the game. So I'm happy about that decision. Now all we need is Blastoise to finally be added to the damn thing. Like, why did they do Blissey first, man? Like, come on. But... Other than that, uh, they gave a release date for Mobile Unite. I think it was September 22nd, something about that. And something that uh, you that would have upset me if you told me before the presentation uh, happened, which would be the fact that the game did not get delayed, the game being Legends Arceus. But my hopes are now high for both Legends Arceus and Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl because they revealed a lot of stuff. And all I'll say is it, is it made me quite happy. So I'm, I'm going to come to Legends Arceus last. So that's going to be on the screen for a little while first. So actually, I'll just go over here for a second. <laughs> but for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, not only did they like tweak the, the graphics and shaders a little bit and the games look way better now, like, like graphically, they look way better. They introduced Pokemon following you, which was which was absolutely huge. And, uh, there, there were a few other, other things that were big. I'm trying to see if it comes to, to mind right now. Character customization. That's what it was. They also introduced character customization. So from what I saw, it's not going to be as in-depth as other game character customization, where there's just going to be, like, a single set of clothing, and you can't, like, mix and match, which I'd still be fine with, because that makes sense that it would be kind of hard to mix all the clothing on the little, like, overworld chibi sprites. So that's fair. But that and that Pokemon are following you throughout the game, that is incredible and I love it. And that's all that's all we really, really got for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, but overall that was that was really enough for me. Just to see that the games are looking better, that they're doing stuff that people wanted. And yeah. So now we're gonna get to the big one. Legends Arceus. This game I'm so hyped for. Absolutely incredibly hyped for. And they talked about a lot so we now learn that there are going to be new regional forms and it's not Sinnoh the region is called Hisui which is apparently the name of Sinnoh before it was actually called Sinnoh so we have Hisuian Pokemon and we have new evolutions too so I'm actually going to talk about those first I actually have them opened in some tabs right now so I'm gonna switch over here and we have Hisui and Growlithe, which is cool. I saw that they talked about rocks. I thought it would just be a pure rock type, but it's actually still a fire type. You guys probably can't. You might be able to read that, but that's his fire rock right there. So I'm really excited for that just to see what they do with Arcanine. A fire rock Arcanine could be really cool, and I really love Arcanine. It's one of my favorite Gen 1 Pokemon. And uh, there's not a whole lot to talk about. They just give, like, uh, what I like to call the Pokedex kind of description about the Pokemon, like what the Pokedex would say, like lore-ish stuff, how they function in the wild and stuff like that, which makes sense in Legends Arceus. So it gives like, uh, they, they stay with, with a partner, uh, how their fur works, they have a hard stony horn and soft fur, all stuff like that. And then they got all the other Pokemon here, but I already have tabs open for them. So next up, we have Hisui and Braviary. This one's really cool. I was not expecting this i would have expected expected only forms and like evolutions of mons that were gen 4 and b4 but we didn't which is it brings my hopes up a little bit honestly but now we have a psychic flying braviary which that's pretty cool uh it looks really cool it's got the little like i don't even know what you call it a little crest of like psychic energy i don't know it's definitely not feathers like the unovan Braviary, but I think that this was a really cool decision to, to do Braviary. Also, 
Braviary, along with a few other Pokemon, you're going to be able to ride, which that's just sick. And speaking of other Pokemon you're going to be able to ride, we have Weirdeer, an evolution for Stantler. And I must say that it is a very odd decision of a Pokemon to give an evolution for because, you know, it's, it's Stantler. It's kind of a boring mon. But overall, the design is pretty good. I, I like it. It's a normal psychic type. And, yeah, it's got it's basically just a bearded Stantler. And then it gives more description. In the Hisui region, Stantler can evolve into Weird Deer. This Pokemon has been treasured since long ago by the people of this region for whom it is indispensable. It grows much larger when it evolves, and garments with the fur shed from its beard, tail, and legs are highly prized for their top-notch protection against the cold. So yeah, just like lore-type stuff about the Pokemon. I actually did not notice that it would have been so much bigger. It says it grows much larger. Let's see, 5'11 and 210 pounds. Let's go to the trusty old Pokemon database and see where Stantler is at. Oh yeah. It grows like almost 50 pounds more and it grows over a foot in height so that that's pretty cool yeah uh and then this is my this is the final one this one i'm the most excited for because i was talking about this like a while ago just completely unrelated to future games saying they need to pull a magikarp with basculin in a future generation because basculin's all right and it has a decent design and i think if they gave it like a big evolution it could be really good and guess what they did Ta-da! Basculegion. I love this thing. It's the only water ghost type that we have other than Frillish and Jellicent. So it's a really good offensive type on what I'm assuming would end up being an offensive Pokemon. Because Jellicent, not so much. It's more on the bulk side. It's also massive. 9 foot 10. Same length as Dragapult, Scorch, other stuff like that. It's big fish. Big fish man. And he's apparently in the Sharpedo Club with uh, tailless fish stuff. He's just got little spirit energy there. And the lore behind it was cool that they talked about in the uh, in the Pokemon Presents. Battling together with the mournful souls of its comrades, it evolves when its friends all die. On some little Uzi Vert vibes, push me to the edge, all my friends are dead. And then it evolves into this beast. Like, come on. If this thing still has adaptability, it will be the most overpowered thing ever, probably. Also, one thing that I was wondering right when I saw it, because right when I saw it, I was like, well, that's a Basculin evolution. Look at its eyes. Look at its face. That's a Basculin evolution. And I was correct. But will there be a blue one? Now, personally, I don't care because I like the red Basculin more because I think the blue one just kind of looks weird with its, like, really thin, oddly designed, streamlined eyes versus the red Basculin having normal eyes. But, yeah, another thing that I want out of this is, like, a good shiny because Basculin... That's a really subpar shiny. It doesn't change a whole lot, but dash whatever. And that that's that's it. I was just wanting to go over all the new Pokemans that got added, or talked about at least. So, yeah, and then they just gave us a bunch of lore about about the games. So, in the, if you go to the story area, uh, it gives it tells you that you, you're in Jubilife Village. That's where you're big chillin' and it describes like the characters around you and stuff like that and i just wanted to uh put a few things out to talk about a few things so this guy the leader of of the galaxy team is apparently according to this website a an ancestor of professor rowan which is pretty cool and i think it's quite obvious that captain silene is an ancestor of cyrus like look at her and Segway, speaking of the Galaxy Team, it's called the Galaxy Team. Look at that logo. The Galaxy Team definitely ends up turning into Team Galactic, so maybe we play as bad guys. I don't know. Maybe we make the Pokedex and we don't know that we're supporting an evil corporation or what will become one, which I think is pretty cool to think about because, like, look at it. It's literally the Team Galactic logo, just a little bit different. Like, right there? Come on. We're, we're working for Team Galactic, but hundreds of years ago and it's literally like the captain of one of the sectors if you will the the survey corps of the galaxy team the captain is literally just cyrus if he was a woman a couple hundred years ago like come on obviously it even says down here when it talks about uh kamado being related to rowan it says and it seems that there are other people in this game who might also be ancestors to, to familiar faces you may know like, for example, the, the dead, the absolute dead giveaways that they don't say straight up 
are descendants of Lucas and Dawn, Akari and Ray. They very much are. Like, look at them. Same exact faces as Lucas and Dawn, respectively. But, like, they don't say straight up that they're relatives. But, like, that's a dead giveaway. And then, like I said before, like, Silene is definitely a relative of Cyrus. Like, another dead giveaway. Look at her. And overall, I gotta say, this Pokemon Presents uh, has given me a lot more hope in these games that are coming out because we have a lot of new stuff that we're talking about. Pretty cool lore that could happen to, like, this woman being related to Cyrus and that having to do having something to do with the Galaxy team becoming Team Galactic. But, uh, yeah, I'm really excited for the games now, both of them. I have high hopes now. I did not. And I was really only uh, grasping at straws for Legends Arceus to be good. And now I am confident that both games will be good. Now, can they still be bad? Yeah, they definitely can. But will they? Probably not. It's looking like they're, they're coming together pretty freaking well. So that's, that's all I really had to say. I just wanted to tell you guys about how I felt about the Pokemon Presents and what they talked about, and yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys are ready and excited for these games to come out, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Deuces.